Hey everybody, Dan Rubiner here with Windows Central, and today we're taking a look at the Hewlett Packard HP, also known as the HP Spectre X360. If you live in the United States and elsewhere, you may have seen this laptop being advertised uh, heavily on TV. In fact, I see this commercial numerous times a night. It is one of the newest Ultrabooks from HP, and I'm gonna be frankly honest, I'm not an HP fan. Uh, every time I see their notebooks in stores, namely the Envy series, I just walk away. I never find anything nice about them. This device is the exception. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and partly because this device is actually co-made with Microsoft. Now it's the HP name on here and we should give them the credit, but they did work closely with Microsoft engineers to basically make this the best laptop that they could. And I gotta admit, uh, you know, it helped out here. Microsoft uh, really rubbed off on them on all the good ways and they made an exceptional device. We are looking here at a 13.3 inch, uh, basically Ultrabook, which means it of course doesn't have a CD-ROM. It is all metal and you get these really cool hinges too, which fold in on themselves. They're not the typical uh, resistant type uh, hinges, but instead they fold in on themselves, which helps keeps the size uh, small when you rotate them around. So this does flip around like a yoga, so you can go around to the, the full screen basically. Uh, over here, we'll go to the sides and we'll take a look. You got your power plug here. We'll get to that power outlet in a second because uh, HP gives you ample cordage <laughs> to use, which is both good and bad, right? It's messy to pack, but on the other hand, if you got to plug into an outlet that's about, you know, 10 feet away, you should be okay with this. Here is the single vent system on here to cool off the Core i series processor. You can get this in Core i5 or Core i7. Um, this is the special one that they gave out a build, so it's a Core i5. The one Microsoft sells in their store, though, is a Core i7. Over here, you have a USB 3.0. Of course, the power button over here on the side. Generally not a fan of power buttons on the side, and that sticks here, too. Uh, it's a little awkward to um, to find and power on, um, you know, of course, you don't accidentally hit it either very much. It's pretty recessed, but still, I would prefer to in the dash myself. Look at this, you got a nice full SD card slot there, which is always really nice to have. Let's rotate it around here. And plenty of stuff on the other side too. Headphone jack, you also have another USB 3.0, another USB 3.0. HDMI out and a mini display port along with the volume controls and a Windows key, which is always a little strange. Uh, I can't say I've ever used these on these types of devices, but I guess it doesn't hurt to have them there either. Uh, coming around to the back here, you can see the hinge and just look how elegant this is. Beautiful mirrored covered, uh, covers for the hinges and, and those are, you know, solid metal right there. And you get this nice curved, uh, here uh, area for the screen along with a Hewlett Packard name. I kind of actually glad they went with Hewlett Packard as the full name. I think it definitely looks better. Going to the bottom here, very clean design, no stickers. All you have here is a nice uh, intake vent for the processor. You have some rubber feet here for basically sliding. And then of course you have these two speakers here in the front, uh, which do per, you know give pretty good performance. Other than that though, very smooth. And finally, coming around to the top, and you got the nice clean finish. If you think this looks a lot like a MacBook Pro, you're probably not too far off. I think they were going for that look. On the other hand, I don't know what else you can use it for this type of metal and not get that silver finish. Opening up the device here, you get a nice full-size keyboard. Uh, this device has been reviewed by numerous sites already, and one thing they always point out, and I agree with, is the key travel is really good on this meaning that it travels down far. It's kind of, um, I don't wanna say spongy, but it definitely has a nice resistance to it. And of course, being solid metal, this whole thing is just all metal. There is no uh, give here whatsoever, nothing creaks. It's just a single unibody design. It looks really, really nice. Let's talk about the display for a second here. It is, of course, a touchscreen device, as you can see, and it comes in two different versions. Like it's 13.3 inches, but you can get a 1080p or a Quad HD display. Personally speaking, I've used Quad HDs on 13 inch devices. Although they look really nice, I actually prefer 1080p just for the extra battery life. And I think that carries over here. This is a really good display. I love the color contrast on it, the full color gamut. It just looks really good. It's probably one of the best 1080p displays I've seen on devices recently. And I think most of you guys will be pretty much happy with it. Uh, coming down to the main, area over here you have 
what is a trademark almost of Hewlett Packard devices, which is this ginormous trackpad uh, and is very long, of course. Some people actually like this, some people don't, but uh, I think most people will be very happy with it. You get a lot of movement, a lot of area to work with. It is not a precision touchpad, which is actually kind of interesting considering Microsoft worked with them on this. Having said that, you do get a lot of controls on this. In fact, we can actually see what you get here with this device. It is a synaptics, synaptics touchpad, and you get the click pad settings here. Two finger scrolling, pinch to zoom, rotating, three finger press, three fingers flick, four fingers flick. Different scrolling options, tapping, buttons, clicking, and enable swipe edge or edge swipes. And that's for here for the trackpad. Interestingly, those come disabled, so you may want to enable those by default if you're a big fan of using the gesture system here on, uh, on Windows. Other than that though, it's a really, really good device. Battery life is rated at about 12 and a half hours. We haven't been able to test that yet, but uh, it does get very good battery life. Uh, most reviews so far have been putting it at around 11 hours. I think that'll hold up, especially with an Intel Core i5. It should do a little bit better than the Core i7 model, of course. And being a 1080p device, it should also get pretty decent battery life. As far as storage, this one actually only has 128 gigs. Now, that is the exception. In fact, you can't buy this particular model in stores. The one at the Microsoft store is a Core i7 with an ample 512 gigs of storage. And you also get eight gigs of RAM on all these devices. So I think that's a pretty good uh, power package for an Ultrabook. Pretty standard these days, and I don't expect really too much more. The keyboard is backlit. So, and what's interesting here, you can see this key right here. That is the backlit uh, switch, basically. It always stays on when the keyboard light is off. And then when you tap it, it can basically turn it on. Now it's kind of hard to see here with the lights, uh, but there's basically a white light that comes out from the keyboard and it's pretty good, but you still run into the same problem that uh, is found on Acer type laptops with, with the silver keys. That is you get a white light showing through a silver key and it gets a little hard to sometimes see the actual letter on there, it sort of washes it out a little bit. I would have preferred a blue light back there. I think it would have looked better and given more contrast, but white light it is. But it works pretty well. I don't have that many complaints about it. As far as typing on this overall, like I said, very good for key travel. And it feels nice with your palms here resting. If you notice too, it doesn't pick up much grease, which is something I know some of the Lenovo's gets very greasy and it shows on the keys and the device itself. Not really having that problem here with this kind of metal, so that is really good as well. What about Windows 10? Luckily, we have two devices in-house here, and so one of them we kept the default Windows 8.1 on, but this one we put Windows 10 Build 174, and it runs very, very well. You can see here we've got the new menu system, and this is the one, of course, that will be, uh, well, not this exact version, but this will be shipping as an upgrade to this device later this summer. Now, we've also heard Microsoft is working closely with Hewitt Packard to basically deliver a really uh, substantial update for this system. Specifically here, one of the reasons why this device gets really good battery life is Microsoft's engineers apparently worked with HP to optimize a bunch of settings as far as uh, power, keyboard, uh, display, so things shut down when you're not using them. And we expect that to carry over here for Windows 10, where we'll get all new uh, operating system, basically, and new drivers. Speaking of, though, the drivers themselves actually work pretty well on this, although I don't get the gesture su support yet with the trackpad. Everything else has actually been running very well and getting good battery life. And I actually kind of recommend, if you're feeling adventurous, to put Windows 10 on it now, and you should be okay with it. But, uh, and one other thing we should mention here is the Wi-Fi. This supposedly has a Wi-Fi antenna up here in the display. And it's supposed to be one of the newer versions where it's going to get really high uh, bandwidth. We haven't been able to fully test that completely, but so far we haven't lost any connections. In fact, I haven't noticed any really negatives to this. The only thing I've noticed is out of the box, when you load Windows 8.1, you do need to do about 480 megs of updates. And without that, I noticed uh, the trackpad sometimes has issues clicking and registering. But once you do the updates, it's totally fine and I've noticed no issues. Same here running Windows 10, I've noticed no problems either, nothing show stopping. You do of course get a webcam up here and it's pretty nice. In fact, there's some software that comes along with this that will give you um, some funny options you can do with the web camera. And in case you're worried about bloatware, even if you buy this from HP, there really is not much in terms of bloatware coming. There's a couple apps here and there, 
But other than that, there really are not that many uh, programs on here that you need to worry about. And so I think it's a pretty good system. Uh, here we go, HP Connected Drive, Connected Music, Connected Photo, Help and Support. Most of these are pretty standard apps, getting started with Windows 8, but you can uninstall all of these, of course, it's not a big deal. But nothing too intrusive, nothing installs in the startup, and that's the stuff I kind of am really happy about. And before we go, we got to, of course, show you the flagship feature of this device, which is the hinges and the rotating display. So this doesn't use a friction hinge. It uses a gear-driven hinge. It's actually really interesting because it folds in on itself and it doesn't cause the device to get any larger. What I mean here, of course, is this basically has four modes. You have the normal, normal laptop mode, but you can also rotate it around and use it in tent mode. This is good for airplanes where you want to save space. And you can basically prop up the device that way. You can also, of course, do this and go this method and the screen rotates. Of course, the most frequent mode most people will probably use besides a laptop is when you fold it all the way down and you go into basically the full, full tablet mode. And I just hit that Windows key there. It's a little weird, but you can see it's placed here for your fingers, so when you're holding it this way, you can jump back and forth. It's not too bad, especially if you want to uh, you know, be, be able to switch between your displays. But here we go, we're in the full tablet mode now. The device weighs 3.2 to 3.3 pounds, depending also on the type of screen you get with it. But uh, overall, it's a little heavy. Now, like I said, the good news here, this is a heavy device, but what you're getting is exceptional battery life and really solid build quality. So it's an interesting trade-off. I'm not sure how often I'll actually use this as a tablet to hold, but certainly a nice option to hold in your lap and just use it in this sense. And overall, it you know, runs pretty well. You can, of course, use all the gestures that way. Looking over here at the hinge, you can see it now in its different mode. And it looks pretty cool, and I have to admit, they did a really nice job with this. Now, being that this is not a resistive hinge, it should last a long time and not wear and tear over the ages when you're opening it, flipping it all the time. Speaking of, it holds its position pretty well when it's happening in the screen, and that's kind of what you want. It does flex a little, but you notice it's not actually going back, it just bounces. So that's a quick look here at the Hewlett Packard X360 Spectre. Uh, like I said, I am not an HP fan. I'm making the exception here though for this device. It is just exceptionally well built, solid, beautiful keyboard on there. I wish I could change the backlighting a little bit, but definitely not a deal breaker. Hey, at least it's got a backlit keys. Beautiful display on there. I'm very happy with the 1080p. I see no need to get a QHD, but if you are an artist or do photographic work, you may want to consider it. Great battery life. You got Windows 10 that you can put on this and it runs very well. And you got that subtle support there from Microsoft with this device. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a little heavy, but at least you're getting a really solid type metal machine that compares favorably to a MacBook Pro. And you're getting really good battery life. Probably the best battery life I've seen yet in these types of machines. And we're talking about at least between 10 to 12 hours of real-time battery life with the screen and Wi-Fi on. So there you go. Head to Windows Central. You tell us what you think. Are you surprised about HP's new device here? Because we are. But tell us what you think. Take care, everybody.